So I'm sitting here with Rabbi Cardoza in his home um, in Bait Vagan. As I walked in, he had uh, classical music. Which music did you have on? What music did I have on? It was the cello concerto of... No, I forgot the name of the person, of the great cello um, players. I can't do it. Okay, fine. But you had classical music, and this is yes, similar this to the last time I came over. You had yes, Bach I, I, on, maybe? Yeah, no, this was not Bach, this was somebody else. But my brain doesn't work <laughs> if I don't hear music. It just closes down. So, so, uh, so I just wanted to give the, the listener a type of avira atmosphere of what it feels like uh, right now, um, sitting with Rav Cardoza. So what I want to do is I want to quote a, um, a passage of Rabbi Herschel, Abraham Joshua Herschel, who uh, both Rav Cardoza and I um, have been deeply moved and inspired by. Um, many people think that he is the founder of the conservative movement. This is totally wrong. Um, to say that he is involved in the renewal movement, I would also say that this is inaccurate. Rabbi Herschel really did not, um, uh, defies all these uh, these labels, which I would actually think uh, Rabbi Cardoza has a similar uh, type of label. We don't know where to put you, Rabbi Cardoza, and I think those type of thinkers, Rav Cook was one of them, um, Rav Shagar, also people don't know what to do with him. Um, and I th- I'm very attracted to figures like this. So I want to quote um, a passage of Rabbi Herschel. Stop you for a Please do. Rabbi Yitz Greenberg, who I'm appreciating more and more, once said, it doesn't matter to which denomination you belong, as long as you are ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you elaborate on what you think uh, that means? What, he, what was, it means he, to you? he was asked, I was told by somebody before he answered and said what I just quoted, he was asked, so if you are so open-minded, why are you belonging to the Orthodox movement, which he is? So he said, because it is the denomination which I feel little or less ashamed of. <laughs> but it doesn't mean to say that I am not ashamed of it. Beautiful. And that is for me also true. Okay, so this is the quote of Rabbi Heschel. Um, so Rabbi Heschel says, um, when I was young, I admired clever people. Mm-hmm. Now that I am old, I admire kind people. Now this is a very important quote for me, especially if anybody knows about Rabbi Heschel, he was... Uh, obsessed with philosophy when he was in Berlin in Nazi Germany and eventually all his professors turn on him and become Nazis and uh, when he gets to America he falls in love with the civil rights movement and becomes very passionate about kindness and not just truth but also how we treat human beings and in many ways he goes through the shift from being a philosopher to a prophet which means kindness towards people so I want to ask you about this tension um, in religious people um, on the one hand, truth seekers, and on the other hand, uh, being a mensch and being kind to people. Do you see that there's a tension? Some people are of, often so obsessed with truth, but they're not kind people. They're not. They don't have this humanness to them. Yes, this is a very complicated question you are asking me. I always feel, and I think that uh, Robert Heschel, in his books on the prophets, which were one of his earlier books and more profound books, I would say most profound books uh, discussing the prophets were the prophets such nice people they probably were not from what if you read carefully what they said they were sometimes very harsh they were truthful people they should stood for the truth but truth and kindness do not always go together and if you are just kind may quite well be very nice and the outside world will love you but the truth about it is that you probably have given up on some truth dimensions and conditions which you would fight for and the moment you get into a fight you probably will make enemies i'm sure that the prophets had many enemies and that is the only way how to do this so the balance between being kind yes and being truthful is an is possible but the balance for each one of us is different and sometimes people need to do things which are unpleasant because on the end it is the only right thing to do the famous example of that is Yosef in Bereshit where he does all the terrible things against his brothers and uh, holds back information to his father that he's still alive but if you look in the commentators too long to speak about now is that you see that he does that because on the end he wants to get to something which is really 
very important for all of them. But the road to go there is sometimes a difficult and painful road for the people you want to help and also for yourself. And Joseph had one very great advantage over many of us, and that is that the Torah writes the whole story, so we know how it ended up. But if you're in the middle of the story, mm. and you won't have a Torah which tells you what really went on within you and why you did the things you did, mm. it may become a problem, and you will have to live with it. Well, you're saying Yosef was more towards the truth or more towards kindness? Which one are you trying to I think he was constantly in a fight with both of them. He sometimes took one side, then he took another side, and he must have had guilt feelings sometimes in the way how he handled the whole story with his brothers. I mean, they did definitely fathers. did not deserve kindness after and, what they uh, did they to him. They did not deserve kindness. And one of the things which I wrote in one of my latest books is also that when Yosef on the end says to them, you know, you are not guilty, he seems, in my opinion, to say, perhaps I'm guilty because I started this whole thing with this katonet hapasim, this colorful garment, and the way how I treated you, and I said that I'm more important than you are. So who is more guilty in this whole story? Mm. And it all depends on how you are looking to that story, from what point of view do you get into the story. Mm. But that is what human life is all about. I want to bring up another aspect of the tension between being a person of truth, seeking truth, and then a person of kindness is... Um, something you've touched on many times that when you were involved in the Haredi world um, and I was also very involved in the Haredi world and the Baal Tshuva movement a lot of these Baal Tshuva who become Haredi um, they're very deep truth seekers but they often offend their family and are very rude um, to the secular world that they came from Kafui Tova, you know, lack of gratitude in the name of truth so maybe you can talk a little bit about I know in your own life uh, you struggle with this with your brother in the documentary they made about you of you being such a passionate truth seeker that it actually hurt your family it hurt your brother yes this is a big problem the trouble is that you find the truth about it much later in your life when you have already done the damage <laughs> there is there is probably no way out there unless people come and tell you when you're still young like in my case and tell you you are on the wrong track here which i didn't have and um, I didn't realize at the time, but it indeed is a very big uh, problem. Um, each one of us is different in this respect, and each one of us has to find a way how to deal with this issue. Ask me the question again. <sighs> I also struggle with my own life, Rav Cardoza, so this is not just an abstract question right. to you that in my own zealotry and in your own zealotry for religious um, sincerity and authenticity, um, you have mentioned yourself that you hurt um, you know, your brother about uh, you know, right. the, the, the Yain Nesser. Right. Um, how does a person become more and more passionate about, let's take the example, religion and Torah, and yet still stay considerate and sensitive? Because it's a very hard road to stay in the middle of. I have so many students, as they become more and more religious, they become more judgmental towards the world oh. they come from. How, how do we, on the one hand, become very strong in our beliefs, which is a good value, and on the other hand, still tolerant? I believe that within the Jewish tradition, there are enough examples where you get a derech, a way how to deal with that, um, where you need to be educated, that you are able to stick with your personal beliefs and not hurt somebody else who is called different beliefs. Um, I think there are within the Jewish tradition sources for that. I think the whole Humash is one big, um, let's say, struggle really with this whole issue of how do you deal with the outside world. It's very interesting that the Natsif uh, uh, Raf, uh, what is his name again? Uh, um, Natalie. Uh, Natalie uh, Berlin uh, writes in his uh, Mavo, in his introduction to uh, Seva Bereshit, that the Avot were Yusharim. They were straightforward people. They were not just Sadiqim and not just Hasidim, mm -hmm. the righteous people, but they were straightforward in the way how they dealt with the idol worshippers. 
yeah. which is very interesting that they went out of their way to be nice to them, right? And then later in the Torah, which he does not mention, there is this sudden statement that you are not allowed to be nice to idol worshippers as one of the 613 commandments, <laughs> right? He, he, he completely ignores that, at least in that uh, introduction, because he was a man probably with a tremendous big heart and realized, and I think he says something like that, if we are not nice to people we disagree with, the world can't evolve. The world is not able to continue. You have to be a dukma, you have to be an example to people like that, but you also have to uh, respect their point of view and especially today, I would say, and especially after the, the Holocaust, mm. where many Jews felt that God left them alone and did not look after them. Even when they were Orthodox people, it becomes harder to be just judgmental about people who are not religious. I think Eliezer Berkowitz once says, there are people who are no longer religious and that is holy disbelief. And this is, I think, very, very true. You have to ask the question, how can I judge somebody? Okay, I found my truth, but my truth gets compromised by certain, or by my belief better, gets compromised by certain things like the Holocaust, where we don't know why God allowed this to happen and perhaps was involved in this to happen. So who am I to say that these people are wrong? Therefore, also in my way, how I deal with them when I go to my parents. And my parents are not eating kosher and I want to eat kosher. You find a modus vivendi how to deal with that and you never offend these people. But the problem is that especially in the Balti Shua movement, and I have a lot of experience because I taught there, nobody ever taught anything about this. People were taught how to be religious, to be from as it was called, and they were never being taught about uh, what are you going to do when you're going home in for vacation and your parents are not eating kosher and you really are criticizing them yeah. by just your very behavior that you don't want to eat that stuff anymore because it is not kosher. Nobody gave any kind of leading or any kind of uh, guidance there. That's why I think Huge mystery. this line of Rav Heshel that we began this um, conversation with is very profound. That he said, "When I was younger, I was I would admire clever people, right. truth seekers, you right. know, philosophers, right. or we could right. even say Rosh Yeshivot, religious right. people." Right. And as he got older, he started to admire kind people. And this is something I actually seen in your writings a lot. That early on, I've read your writings. Everything is about. Um, defending the Torah, defending the Torah. The Torah is always right, and there's strong criticisms of the secular world. As your writings have progressed, I've seen you defend secular people yeah. and secular beliefs. In other words, you've, your Torah has become a Torah not only of emet, it was always a Torah of truth, but it's also been a Torah of chesed, that you have um, developed this deep openness to considering the other, whoever that means, yeah. and not just um, the orthodox world. And I think that's a very, like we said, it's a tension that should be in people. We don't have to solve it, we have no, to live it. You have to live it. Sometimes you have to make a compromise just for the sake of the dignity of the other person. 